Well, up next for our best in class, we're joined by Thornburg Portfolio Manager Jason Brady. Brady manages uh, Bloomberg Best Global Equities Fund, the Thornburg Investment Income Builder Fund, uh, which has outperformed 98% of its peers uh, over the past five years. I dropped my pen there, so uh, that's why I was looking down. But Jason, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Sure. And uh, you know, what better time, obviously, to talk about global equities on the, you know, on the eve of this G20 meeting? But also, we just had a slew of earnings coming out from some really globally focused companies. You know, Freeport MacBaran, uh, Caterpillar. Those are doing very well. Mm -hmm. So, how do you kind of, you know, how do you navigate between great earnings on this side and then all this concern about currency devaluation on the other side? Sure. Well, I think the important thing to do is really look at the asset itself. Um, so, if you're looking at a particular stock, say Caterpillar or a company we own, McDonald's, which also has, you know, a, a very big right, global presence, right. uh, what you're really looking at is here's what the company's doing. Here's what we can project about that. Here's the environment that it's operating in. Mm -hmm. And from there, you say, well, is this a good investment or not? And again, what you're really looking at is a relative value construct. So you can't just say, well, I like McDonald's better than you know Burger King. It's it's I like McDonald's better than you know Clorox or better than um, uh, BHP built. And you really have to look at the, the global context where the the company is operating. You mean gauging how they are operating vis-a-vis -vis the other who are in the same boat essentially, and how they're operating overseas? And is that what you're? Is that essentially what you're saying? That's right. But okay. also, you know, what industry they're operating in and how effective will that be? For example, by what's going on at the G20. That's a, that's a okay. very important aspect of the investment. Well, I mean, you know, if the G20 comes out with an agreement, how is that going to affect your global strategy? Well, it, uh, well what's the agreement going to be? If you can tell right. me, that, that would be very helpful, please. <laughs> I'm, like I'm, ready to to, I'm ready to go. No, it's, I mean, uh, we have some idea that they're going to, you know, try to keep from, from competitive devaluation. That's right. And, and, and ultimately, uh, what I'm hopeful about is that that will stabilize the market environment a little bit here, where, you know, you've got a lot of rhetoric coming from the U.S., coming from China, you know, and, and what, what's, what are, what is the currency going to be? And, and ultimately, for global companies, for multinational companies, you know, currency movements, as we saw from Credit Suisse, can be can be really important. Uh, right. So I'm hopeful that, that will stabilize the environment a little bit. Um, okay. We'll get a little bit more clarity on regulation. That will help us really drill through to what the company's operating uh, environment might be a little bit easier. So then, what are the companies? What are the industries that you're, you know, that you think are pretty good? I mean, and in, in, in many ways, protected from some of what's going on overseas. Sure. Well, one of the our biggest overweight, I would say, although again, we don't think about things as far as an index. It's sort of, we have three goals for the fund. It's it's a growing dividend over time principally, but also attractive dividend and potential for capital appreciation. But that growing dividend over time really, um, we think, comes principally from stable businesses, um, good, solid operating, just things you've heard before, not, right, not, a, right. not a tremendously but, but different But let's construct. say, because I know Vodafone, for instance, right? Okay. You're saying, I'll go for Vodafone versus sure. Verizon. Right. And tell me the reasoning behind okay, that. Okay, so, so Vodafone and Telstra, actually, which is something we also hold. Um, Verizon, a lot of people talk to us and we say, well, why don't, why don't you own Verizon? It's a great company. Right. It's got uh, solid earnings, uh, relatively less affected by sort of what's going on globally. Uh, but this is this is just a great company. You know, it's got a, a P of maybe eight, ten times uh, earnings or a dividend yield of six percent. This is sort of right in your wheelhouse as a as a dividend paying story, as a growing dividend story, which is really what we're looking for. They say, okay, well, let's go look at Telstra or Vodafone. Vodafone has exposure uh, to the U.S. market via Verizon Wireless. And for those who don't know, T Telstra is the Australian company. Telstra is the Australian, Australian company, right? right. So take the same company in Australia. Not quite the same, but but right. broadly similar, same industry. And now I'll give you a eight times PE and a 14% dividend yield. You know, for an investor like us, that's really focused on income. That's going to be a more attractive place to be. Not to I say that Verizon is a bad investment, but but Telstra is, is a little more attractive or Vodafone. When you is see relative way. to, I, I understand that. Okay. Exactly. So um, aside from company specific, though, are there certain regions that you prefer more than others? I mean, are you uh, quite bullish on China, as we've had some fund managers come on and say they are? You know, with the way we're looking at the, the world is really on an asset by asset basis. So if we take a look at, say, Telstra or Vodafone versus Verizon, it's it's as as we sort of discussed, it's really about you know what is the company doing, what can it do. It's not it's not a macro play on a it's gosh, a we macro, love fun, fun we love China. Play. Okay. Now it, it would be it would be ridiculous to say that we don't consider the macro environment. And clearly, if Australia is having trouble, uh, we're not going to be as excited about the Telstra asset sure. versus Verizon. But at the same time, it's really what is this company doing? Where can it go? What are our projections for not only its its growth um, in, in in earnings, but also its dividend its dividend yield? Right. True value investing on a global stage, perhaps. <laughs> okay, Jason, that, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Sure. Uh, Bloomberg Best in Class, Jason Brady of Thornburg Investment Management.